Thank you, Dee. Uh, thank you. I'd like to start by you know, paying my respect and gratitude to the Larica people who have welcomed us so warmly. And I don't know if Auntie B is around, no? Uh, you know, we felt so warmly welcome. And we've got, I come from Daruk land, from Blacktown in Western Sydney. Anyone from Western Sydney? <laughs> anyway, we, call, we have Uncle Wes, we turned 100 last year and to commemorate his 100 years of living in this wonderful land in, in Blacktown, in Mount Druid, uh, he's released a book. And he always says, along with you know, Uncle Wes and Uncle Greg, two of our you know, most revered elders in Blacktown, they always tell us, welcome to the circle. And I think Auntie B said that very well. And I feel so much welcome to the circle. So thank you. Uh, what we have heard over the last few days, and I've been hearing this in every welcome, uh, you know, every time elders speak, they'll say, you know, be kind to Mother Nature, be kind to Earth, you know, Mother Earth, and be kind to, you know, fellow human beings. Now, if we are just listening to that and doing that, how wonderful this world would be. I think it's really important that we l actually listen and practice that as well. So I I'm just getting that message over and over again. And if we are just, you know, and this book is all about that, you know, just being kind to Mother Nature, being kind to, you know, Mother Earth, and being kind to fellow human beings. Because sometimes we tend to have these boundaries around us and create us and others, and that makes our life very, very difficult. And having, as Dee said, you know, we've gone through a lot of challenges, yes, but I think, uh, you know, if we sort of embrace, uh, you know, I just met Caroline, are you there? I signed a book for Caroline, like, you know, yes, you're there. Now, you know, Caroline is my sister from today. Now, once you embrace somebody, it's impossible to harm or do or talk anything bad about that person. So if we just, you know, embrace as we have heard from elders, you know, to be kind to each other, I think this world would be a better place. Uh, just to come back to the book, perhaps, you know, rather than talking, you know, uh, I think it was Fiona who said, you know, are you reading something from the book? So I thought I'll quickly read one sentence. Is that okay? Yes, oh, yeah. I, I think I suggested it before Fiona. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Fiona, you are the second one to suggest that. <laughs> Go for it. One morning in April 1992, I got into our car, left my wife and daughter, and fled my beloved Bhutan. I became a refugee. I was not the most, I was not the most oppressed. Others had it much worse than me. Yet, I was forced to make agonizing decisions. Who would abandon his wife and child? I lived in a state of confusion, guilt, and self-doubt, having to peel my way along a dark path towards a life I believed should be possible, but had no map to find it. I lost my positions my salary, my status, my career, and my country. And in that fall, I gained everything. And this is what I've gained. I have this wonderful opportunity to stand before you all, to be part of this, you know, wonderful human beings, and spread love, that message of love, and, you know, well wishes to everyone. So this book is all about my journey from having been born and brought up in Bhutan, which was then the poorest country in the world. I grew up in a village where we didn't have running water, no electricity, no telephones. We didn't have a road. We had to walk, you know, to go to my nearest high school, we had to walk the whole day. Um, so I grew up in that environment, but I was very fortunate to have good education. And I went on to become, uh, uh, you know, third senior most telecom engineer in the country. And, you know, life was just beautiful. But overnight, 
We lost all that, as I just read. My father, elderly father, was put in prison, tortured very badly. My brother, you know, did the same thing. And many others from the village were put in prison, tortured. And as the government carried out an ethnic cleansing policy, one-seventh of the country's population were made refugees. And then I had to flee the country and, you know, spend the next six years in Nepal. When I became a refugee, we all thought that we lost everything. But we hadn't lost the capacity to love and care for each other. We could look after each other. The doctors and nurses started caring for the elders, well, the children and the sick. And we even started tree schools. You know, people wanted to send their children to schools. And we didn't have a hut or a building to, you know, send children to school. So we said, okay, you know, some of the teachers were so, you know, motivated and inspiring. They said, okay, I'll start my class under that tree because it was very hot there. So somebody else said, I'll start my class under that tree. So we started something called tree schools. And three months ago, I had a visitor from England. And he's a practicing doctor now. He came with two children and he started school under those trees. So we can... Thank you, and what I found was if we could create, you know, doctors and engineers and, you know, technicians, carpenters, from those tree schools, I think we are living in what I call heaven because, you know, this is, this is really heaven from, you know, what I came through. And having spent six years in that refugee camp helping set up schools and hospital working, you know, to, you know, get children back into school, I was a little crazy. And, you know, after five years, I started thinking, you know, like, we need to look at alternatives. You know, my daughter's growing, my parents are, you know, growing older. I need to, as a father, I need to take care of my daughter. I need to take care of my parents. And then I was a little crazy and, you know, thought of doing an MBA and somehow managed to come to Australia and, you know, I start like you know a new life when my wife and daughter were able to join after three years, and then I thought you know it's my responsibility to do something for refugees and refugee settlement because I was you know very lucky to be settling in this country. So I put myself. I, Ten years ago, I left my job at Telstra. It was a very well-paid job. It was the best job in the world. You know I loved doing that, but I my heart was back in the community, so I left that job and asked my wife if I could, you know, volunteer for a year, and that extended <laughs> to two years, and then three years, then I knew I was running out of generosity, so I set up my own practice, so I run my own home doing consulting now, you know, operate on a 50-50 model, so I operate, you know, 50% of the time for money, and then the rest I volunteer in the community. And in that process, I was able to sort of work with other fellow, you know, uh, friends, and we have developed a bottom-up strength-based model for refugee settlement. And this book also captures that, and it captures my journey from moving from a corporate world to the community. And I was living in two different worlds. I used to work in the city at Telstra in a corporate environment, but I used to come back home in Blacktown, where Blacktown is a wonderful city. Like, you know, it has a population of 400,000 people, and we have people from 188 different countries. How beautiful is that? When I was a child, I wanted to, you know, work for the United Nations. And this is the United Nations for me because, you know, you just go out there and you meet people from South Sudan to Afghanistan to wherever you call it, you know, people from 180 different countries. And we speak 182 languages. How rich is that? And thanks for sharing that. Uh, Jason, he shared a story yeah. yesterday. The true black town, two Mount Ruids, you know, a lot of people have, you know, different perception about those places. But yesterday, you know, there was a, you know, message in the Facebook page where, you know, somebody was, you know, sick on the street, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people just gathered together, took that person to the hospital and, you know, saved the life. So we have people with good heart. A place becomes good with people with a good heart. And I think we are in a place where people have good heart, and I feel very privileged to be living in a place called Blacktown. Mm -hmm. So this is the story that we have in the book, and I've also got my own story, my own family coming together, you know, uh, you know, I lived again, like, you know, away from my wife and daughter, but it, for 
with some blessings, you know, they were able to join me for my graduation, you know, like just two days before my graduation, I heard that, you know, they got a visa, so they were able to join me. And then now, you know, my daughter, we just had one daughter, you know, only child. She's married now. She lives very next to us. And uh, yeah, hopefully looking forward to be grandparents now. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and sorry, just a couple of things from me to wrap up. One is how Om said he, he would volunteer his time. He would get to know everyone. Uh, I think probably in Blacktown, everyone knows Om. And, and I said to Michelle, when we first got the, a hold of the book, and I said, look, Michelle, look, here's Om's book. And she said, oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. And I said, no, look closer, Michelle. Look here. And there's this quote from our Prime Minister, from Albo. And I, I said to Om last night, how did you get that? And he went, oh, I've known him for 15 years. He was my local MP. I just asked him to do it. <laughs> and it took a little couple of months, but, but yeah, that, that's the, the you know, networking of Om. Um, that could, but, be, that but, could be a workshop, the networking of Om. <laughs> but that was very interesting, actually. i just add, on to the, yeah. add to that, because uh, I was jobless, I was looking for work, and, you know, I, I was just finishing uni, finished uni, and, you know, uh, I've got a long story, but I sent 52 applications and had 52 rejections. It was very hard to get your professional you know, job that you're applying for. And in that, I thought, why not go out and do something? And we didn't have an amnesty group in Am Marrickville where I lived. So a couple of friends, we got together and we set up my amnesty international, uh, you know, Dalichil chapter, Dalichil Marrickville chapter. And then, you know, every other week we'll put up a stall and raise some funds for Amnesty and, you know, we'll invite the local, you know, people who is who of Marrickville. And, of course, our local MP was uh, Anthony Albanese and his wife, Carmen, who was then the education minister, state, uh, you know, education minister. And we would sort of pull them to the stall and, you know, ask them to buy T-shirts. And I used to have a lot of robust discussion with them, with, uh, especially with Anthony, about, you know, the immigration policies and how we could settle refugees better in this country. And given we had some of those tough discussions, even after 15 years, he since, you know, seems to remember. And he said, you know, like when somebody approached him and said, oh, you know, I'm happy to write a foreword. But... It didn't come for the next two, two and a half months, so we thought, okay, you know, like, I'm sure his minders wouldn't allow him to write the foreword, but, you know, one fine morning we got that, and it was very exciting, and he wrote a very, very personal note, and it made me cry, but <laughs> thank you, Deith, for and sharing where, that. Where can people get your book? Uh, it's, uh, very fortunately, it's available all over the country at every airport. Uh, and I was told that Jim said that it was available in Perth, it was available in Cairns. Uh, somebody bought the book in uh, Canberra, so it's available all over the country. It's available also online, online as well. So if you just uh, look for Om Dungel or Bhutan to Blacktown, you'll find it in different bookstores as well. And we've got a few books available if you are uh, quick enough, you might get a copy at the marketplace as well. So, thank you. Thank you. So, thanks, Om. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.